investors. My name is Edwin Epperson, manager of Blue Bay Capital, and I am helping capital and partners uh, make wiser and more informed decisions. In today's presentation, I'm going to be discussing the differences between an active versus passive private lender, and really, which role do you want to play? As Lewis Carroll has famously said, if you don't know where you are going, any road will get you there. And we want to make sure that we are getting you to the right type of lending uh, that you would be interested in and really fit you. So what will we be discussing today? We will be discussing active private lending roles, passive private lending roles, as well as considerations for both of those. And then of course, how to reach out and contact us so that you can possibly see how you can work with us depending on which role that you wanna play in. First off, let's go ahead and discuss what it means to be an active lender and the questions that you should ask yourself or of others to determine if they are in the business of making loans. Do you or is the person you're speaking with run or work for a lending company? Meaning, are you or they in the business of making loans? Do you or is the person you're speaking with call themselves a hard money lender slash private lender? This presentation is not going to dive into the differences between these two types of lenders. That's actually covered in a different video, but just know that there is a big difference between a hard money lender and a true private lender. Do you or is the person you're speaking with lend on a national scale or just locally? Now there are advantages and disadvantages to each and again, this is not the scope of the presentation. However, this question will help you determine if you are dealing with a hard money lender or a truly private lender. And then of course, last, do you or is the person you're speaking with loan their own capital? Now, both hard money lenders and private lenders may lend their own capital, but more than likely a hard money lender will then package their loan and sell it on the secondary market or even perform what's called table funding with the secondary market's capital. This is where the secondary market actually funds at the close and allows the hard money lender or private lender to not have to deploy their capital on a particular loan. Again, there are advantages and disadvantages to using the secondary market capital, but a dead giveaway is if the hard money lender or quote unquote private lender requires a credit score or a report. If you want to open a lending company and you're looking for ways to make your investing dollars go further, then being able to sell your loans on the secondary market is a great way to build the business. Now, an active lender must have professionals on their team. We all recognize that. These team members are utilized by the active lender uh, to help them make safer and less risky loans. So let's review some of those team members here. The first member of a lender's team is the broker or the borrower. This is the direct source of their loans. The benefit of working with brokers is that they can handle the processing of the loan file and they can help reduce the lender's time sourcing and managing a deal. If an active lender works strictly with brokers, the active lender will most likely see a reduction in points collected at the close on the origination of their loan. But then some of the lender's team members can actually be aggregated from the broker's established team. The second member of the lender's team is the appraiser. This can be an individual or a company, also known as an AMC or appraisal management company. These types of companies allow for a beginning or growing lender to quickly identify trusted appraisers to provide accurate valuations of the borrower's property values, both today's values, i.e. as is, and future values or ARV after repair value. The third member of the lender's team is the inspector. There are many types of inspectors and some properties may or may not require an inspection. This is actually completely on you as a lender to make that decision. However, the most common inspectors are your property inspectors as well as feasibility inspectors. If the lender is making a loan where there will be construction completed on the project, it is highly advised to order a feasibility inspection. The fourth member of the lender's team is title. Title companies ensure that the borrower or the current owner or buyer has clean title and that the property's deed is transferred into their name or their business name upon purchase or refinance of the property. They also ensure that the lender has lender's title insurance. In many states, title can provide the service of escrow or collecting documents, monies, and ensuring signatures from all parties are validated and correct. 
title will also ensure that once a loan is originated and funds are dispersed from escrow, that the mortgage or the deed of trust is recorded in the county where the property is located and the lender is in the correct position on title. More on that in other videos. The fifth member of a lender's team is their attorney. This member is by far the most important team member to the active lender. They ensure all documents signed by the borrower encumber the asset correctly and place all the proper clauses in the mortgage or the deed of trust to ensure an airtight loan has been made and given to their borrower. The last member of a lender's team is their servicing company. Now, not all lenders utilizing, utilize a servicing company. If you are wanting to become an active private lender, then you may very well service your own loans. If you are selling your loans to the secondary market and the secondary market buyer is a large company, then most likely they will have a servicing company that services all of their loans. A servicing company's primary role is to collect the principal, interest, insurance, and taxes, and then ensure the proper entities are paid their respective fees. Servicing can be a very time-consuming business, and there is a lot of onus that falls on the company handling servicing to pay all of those fees and items to each entity on time and in full. So let's talk about active lending considerations. You may need a license depending on your state requirements of where you're lending. Uh, you may need to create an entity and manage them. You may also have to actually find and source the deals if you're going to be an active lender. You will need to vet the borrower, property, and project, and you will need to be aware of how to do that. You need to raise capital or find passive investors uh, that will fund your loans. You have to manage the loan from origination all the way through reconveyance. You have to build your team, the team members that I just mentioned. And then, of course, you have to establish the operations of your business. And then you have to create the underwriting guidelines, the policies, and risk mitigation measures that you have to take to make safer, risk-mitigated loans. At the end of the day, what this tells is this becomes your career. If you're going to be an active lender, this will become a career. This is not a part-time to do it well, uh, to make a living, and to quite honestly build generational wealth for you and your family. This has to be a career. Let's discuss the passive lending side. We have covered at a very high level active lending and what someone who is interested in becoming a lender will need to be aware of. Let's take a look at the passive lending side. Passive lenders are also just called investors. These are individuals with the capital and they want their capital secured to real estate. They want passive, dependable, and reliable income every month, but they do not wish to build a business. Normally they have their own career or they simply do not have the time nor the desire to become an active lender. In all cases, the passive lender will invest their capital into a fund or through an active lender to be able to deploy that capital. Here are the hallmarks of a passive lender and how you can tell if this is the role that you wish to play. A passive lender is typically an individual, although it may be a company that buys or table funds an active lender's loans. For our purposes and to make things easy to understand, we will assume that when I say passive lender, I'm speaking of a private individual. Passive lenders are not advertising that they loan money, but instead they seek out the active lenders to work by, with, and through. Passive lenders are also known as private money, which is different than a private lender. Remember, a private lender is in the business of making loans. Passive lenders are not trying to build a business, and they don't want to deal with the hassles of an active lender's job. Typically, passive lenders invest where they are comfortable, uh, also known as their backyard. Now, some passive lenders are comfortable lending anywhere in the state they live, or maybe even a specific region in the United States. Or they could lend only in their town or city where they live. It's really up to them. For those looking to lend outside their immediate location, working with a broker, also known as an active lender, can facilitate them looking at many different loans, thus having more opportunities to deploy their capital. Last question. Passive lenders are always investing their own capital, whether from a retirement account or cash in the bank 
or even an insurance policy, passive lenders utilize and access their own capital to make loans and invest in loans brought to them by the active lenders. Just like the active lender, the passive lender needs a team. Or do they? You will notice that the team of a passive lender looks a lot. No, it actually looks identical to an active lender's team. So what is the difference really? Well, the difference is this. Remember, the active lender is the one going out and building the team. The passive lender gets to truly utilize and understand leverage. They leverage the active lender's time, knowledge, experience, and their team all while sitting back and collecting monthly file cabinet money. At the end of the day, the active lender does all the legwork, they structure the deal, and then they present the deal to the passive lender. The passive lender then decides whether they want to invest in the loan or not. Let's consider some passive lender considerations. They work only with active lenders or brokers, or they may invest in a fund with a manager that they trust. They review their underlying uh, underwriting guidelines, policies, and procedures, and risk mitigation techniques to ensure that it meets your requirements. You need to leverage your active lenders team completely. You partner with other passive investors to collaborate or partially fund loans brought by an active lender. This is the least amount of work necessary to be a lender. And then of course, at the end of the day, in my opinion, this is the purest form of passive income being a passive lender. Let's discuss and take into consideration everything that we've reviewed with you in this presentation. Time, do you have the time? Time to set up and run a business. Time to build a business. Time to dedicate to perfecting a business. If you do not have the time or the desire to build a business, or you have a career that you do enjoy and you're not looking to start a new career, then you may consider being a passive lender. Knowledge. Do you have the knowledge to make safer, risk-mitigated, and correctly structured loans? Do you know what to look out for and how to vet a borrower, property, and project? Do you have the knowledge of what you can and cannot do in your state as far as lending? Experience. Do you have the experience? Have you ever had to go through a foreclosure? Do you know what a project should look like and what has to be completed during certain phases of a project? Have you had to deal with various unknowns in the private lending space? Do you know how to adjust your lending parameters for economic changes that are coming? Lastly, but honestly, one of the most important aspects of lending, do you have the capital? If you have the capital but lack the previous considerations, then you may very well be a prime candidate for becoming a passive lender. If, however, the first three are right up your alley, you may very well consider going the active lender path. To help potential lenders, both active and passive, determine where they may be best suited, I created a flowchart that helps one quickly identify the role that they will be best suited for. Let's take a look. Experience. As an active lender, this should be a requirement. You need to know how to process and underwrite loan requests. You need to know how to mitigate your risk and most importantly, the risk of your passive lenders. You need to know and understand the life cycle of a loan, the players needed during each stage of that life cycle, the laws governing lending in your state, and to be able to quickly take over control of a loan should a loan file go south. However, for the passive lender, little to no experience is needed, and you just need to know how to vet your potential active lenders. Personal wealth or capital. What defines medium or high wealth is relative to the type of loans you're interested in making. If you're interested in lending on distressed properties, you can typically make several loans with only a few hundred thousand. If you're looking to make loans on luxury properties, then you will want to make sure that you have access to several million dollars. In either case, the passive lender needs more capital to invest than an active lender. An active lender can get started without any capital, but they do need to know and have the time, knowledge, and experience to be able to safely make uh, and place with great care their passive investors' capital into the loans that they originate. Time. How much time do you have? Again, for the active lender, they are committed solely to this business. They are focused on building a business and honestly creating a career. Passive lenders, not so much. They can invest into their trusted and vetted active lender loans with just a few minutes of due diligence. 
I have created a quick downloadable PDF that you can have that goes into more detail about where you are on the active lender versus passive lender scale. If you're watching this video on YouTube or another streaming service, then the link to receive this free resource is in the show notes. If you are watching this video on our blog, you will notice that the PDF access request at the bottom of the blog. In any case, you can sign up, receive a free downloadable copy of your active versus passive lending diagram to help you better understand which side of the table you would like to invest in loan secured real estate. Really, the question of whether you are a passive or an active lender boils down to this. Are you seeking freedom of time? If you're looking for a way to leverage someone else's time so that you can do what you want, when you want, with who you want, any time you want, then you might be a passive lender. Do you lack the experience to create risk-mitigated loans and safely loan your capital to real estate investors? Are you looking for the ever-elusive passive investment that never seems to be quite that passive? Are you looking for a way to truly utilize leverage? Leverage of others, peop other people's time, knowledge, and experience. And are you looking for a way to participate and diversify your investing dollars across multiple assets? If you answer yes to any of the following questions, then I believe that Blue Bay Capital has a solution for you. If you are seeking truly hands-off passive income and passive investments, if you're looking for a way to diversify your portfolio into risk-controlled yet higher yield investments than bonds and dividends. And if you're looking for alternative investments where you think, analyze, and invest like the banks, then I believe that Blue Bay Capital's turnkey private lending solution is perfect for you. My name is Edwin Epperson, manager of Blue Bay Capital. I would very much appreciate being able to connect with you on my social media channels and being able to answer any questions that you have. If you believe that my turnkey private lending solution may be a fit for your investment strategy, then let's grab a phone call and discuss. Have a great rest of your week. God bless.